Morning, good morning. <laughs> blue sky. Blue skies. Nice blue sky. But it's funny, the weather forecast today is interesting. I look, just looked at it a few minutes ago. And it's like every two hours, it's blue sky, blue sky, blue sky, pouring rain, blue sky, blue sky, blue sky. So we're going to get a hit of rain in the late afternoon, it seems. But other than that, it's going to be a bright blue sky all day, apparently. Okay, good morning, welcome back. This is my three-day break to show. From Monday to Thursday, it's my three-day break. Break from streaming. Chance to get other stuff done. I went to Ome yesterday. Although you can't tell by looking at me. <laughs> there was some, there was a bunch of backed up stuff. I haven't been to Ome for, I don't know, you tell me. It's been a month or so, I guess, more than a month. And there was a bunch of backed up stuff, including we have an employee leaving at the end of this month in a couple of days. So I had to get out there. I can't just, okay, I heard on the phone she's leaving, just see you. So I had to go out and say, uh, say goodbye and uh, take her a little something and chat for a while. So, yeah, Yasui-san, uh, one of the ladies who's doing packing, she's the one who originally did the sewing, well, not originally, she partway along came and did the sewing on the books that I made, the My Solitudes books. And since then, for the past 10 years since Hero started, she's been one of the group of three, sometimes four ladies in Ome that does the packaging and shipping. And she's been completely responsible for the Hunger Club prints. So anybody who's got a Hunger Club print over the past 10 years, she's the one who has printed the boards, mounted the print, printed the stories, folded it all up and prepared it. And she's been doing that now for just, just over 10 years. So, and she's leaving at the end of this month. And the problem is, the problem is not me and it's not her, the problem is the national tax laws. She's a, a housewife, her husband has a real, you know, has a job, and she would like to work more, but she can't. She's worked, and now the past bunch of years for her, she's worked up to the limit of what the tax laws allow a, a, a spouse to have before the deduction thing kicks in and she's not, he's not allowed to declare her as a dependent anymore. I forget the number, it's changed over the years. It's something like 130, 1,300,000. So in terms of US dollars, it's probably around $10,000 or something right now. And if the spouse earns up over $10,000, the husband doesn't get her as a deduction anymore. And his company doesn't give him a, a spouse allowance anymore. They lose their uh, housing allowance. So it's impossible for a woman to work to earn more than 10,000 a year and still be married. And some people actually, they get divorced, still live together and be together, but file separate tax returns. That's how bad it is. Anyway, for the best punch of years, she has bumped up against this limit. And, uh, and it's enough is enough. It's just not worth it for her to, uh, to come and do this. So, uh, well, what are we doing today? I have on my desk a present from Ayumi-san, who has asked me to do some work. So we're going to switch out for a few minutes today. Instead of continuing on our color block carving for the surfer. Who benefits from those tax laws? This is back in the 50s and 60s, and who benefited from it was it kept families as a unit. It kept the salaryman working, the little lady was at home cooking, cleaning, making sure his white shirts were clean. And she could go and do one or two or three days a week at the local supermarket. It kept that structure in place didn't want women in careers, period. And that mindset is unfortunately still there. It's, um, no woman in the country likes this. I mean, of course, half of the population, and maybe more, is against this. But the old guard up there who still runs the government. When you say spouse is a female, I don't know the current status of the laws here in Japan on that. I haven't followed it. It's going to be out of date. I mean, it's going to be behind what many Western countries are now doing. I'm not the guy to answer. I don't know. Google it up. Can people get married who are same-sex couples here? It's been in the news. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not the guy to answer. Okay. This one will need a little bit of explanation. We are making our own reproduction of an old Koitsu print, the Matsushima design. This was designed in Showa 11, and up to now we've been using the doi blocks 
to make our copies of it. This one was printed from the blocks we get from the Doi Hunger Company. Some of their blocks are getting pretty ratty and beat up, and last time we had this set in, we saw that was the case. The sky block has a split at one or two places. Some of the other ones have distorted the island blocks. One of them is worn out completely and is a gap over the ocean. We had to really fiddle to get it to work here. So last time Dave looked at it and said, okay, that's it, let's cut and run. This is copyright free material. Koitsu has been dead for long, long more than the copyright laws. So let's cut our own set of blocks. And it's getting a bit, cur uh, it's getting a bit, I don't know, what's the word, I know, difficult to understand for the consumers because some of the doi prints we now, we print here, some of them we print here on blocks we've carved ourselves and some of them she prints on blocks that are left over. So the doi situation right now is really, really, really scrambled. You're asking questions about the tax thing here. I don't know much more about it than what I've already said. I'm sorry. My only knowledge of this is how it affects our work here, where we have a bunch of lady housewives who are working with husbands in real jobs. That's the only angle that I know about this. I'm sorry. You'll have to Google for different information. The paper is out. Two packs. One, Ayumi-san is uh, working on... She's proofing something. I don't know what she's doing. I took out a thin pack for her today. She's proofing something. And the other one is Ishikawa san she's working on the first batch of prints for the November subscriptions. And it's due in a few days, and Ome is like, when are these going to be ready? So she is beavering away today upstairs. She's already at it. Okay, 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 okay. Enough, enough, enough. Let's do some work. Okay, the, the block set is ready, and Aimi-san has been proofing it over the past few days. I don't have a proof copy to show you. She won't let me do that until it's ready. But what we have to do today is this. The key block that we carved, in order to make a full set of color blocks, our carver, Kawasaki-san, carved the key designs. You can see there's the boat, there's the shape of the island, the building on the island, and the trees have black parts that are part of the key block and there's outline and text. And that's all on this block. The trees have black dots here. There's outline and text. But in order to make a proper set of color blocks, look at this. The color of the sky comes down to a certain point. The color of the C block comes up to pretty much the same point. But they're not on the key block. So after you've carved your key block and you're doing your color separations and you're carving the sky block, how do you know where to make the sky? How do you know where to make the sea? Because they're not on the transfer sheets. And if you sort of take your pencil, well, maybe it's around there. And if you get it wrong, you either have a gap between the two or they're going to overlap or the line is going to be crooked or something. Same thing over here. Same thing down here. How do you know where the land ends and the sea meets? So what we did, it's a standard way of doing things. What we did is when Kawasaki-san carved the, the key block, she put in a horizon line. She carved a horizon line and she also carved the shape of these islands. And she also carved the line jointing land and sea. But we don't want any of those lines to be visible in the finished print. We needed to know the shape of the islands, but we don't want an outline around them. We needed to know where the horizon is, but we don't want the line. So this is an example of muda bori, wasted carving. And you're gonna see how wasted it is now because I'm gonna destroy it. The, the, it's done. It's, it's come to the end of its life. It's been used. We made our color separations based on that line, but now it's time for this line to leave the scene. Muda Bodhi. And as usual, those of you who've been watching this stream before, you know we have a problem here. Whenever we carve a block that's already been printed, it's black. We're going to have a real problem with the camera light balance here this morning. And there's really nothing I can do about it. Oh. 
Muda in this case means waste, wasted. And it, it wasn't wasted because it, it had a function and it did its function, but it was wasted in the sense that somebody had to go through all the trouble to carve it and now it's going to get chopped off the block. I think we're okay. We can see the light. Sure, you're all right. Move that body. And it's really easy to cut off too much. And just to confirm, there we are, the key block. There's the line of the cliff and the line of the border. And in this area, there are no key lines at all in this area. And that's what we're talking about here. So off they come. I know if the original carver, if Kawasaki-san, if she was working here in the building, of course, we would just send it upstairs to her desk and she would carve it off. But she's in Kobe. She's already busy with the next project, the next, next project, actually. So to, to pack it up and ship it off and send it to her, ask her to do it and send it back, it's just troublesome. So Dave's just going to sit here and do it now. I'm sense using these blocks still. She has finished her proofing and she's ready to start uh, an addition, I think. So just for convenience, just we get this going. Dave can do it. I don't know, her name will still go on the finished print. It'll say carved by Kawasaki, printed by Ayumi. I don't get credit for this, but I don't think we have to worry about that level of stuff. This is just convenience. There's actually going to be more than this. And Ayumi-san has pointed out one place where we kind of forgot one thing on the original design. When I was preparing the color separations for Kawasaki-san, I did actually omit one little shadow on the boat. So we're short. Ayumi-san can't actually finish the print yet. So I'm going to have to carve one more block for this. That's probably going to be happening this afternoon. And again, I won't get credit for it. It doesn't matter. That is something about this in the 20th century that's been fairly different from all the previous generations that prints were made. You know, when this when we send this print out, it will go out with the the wording Carver Kawasaki printer such and such. But in the old days, or certainly pre-war, it wasn't all that common for one person to take a complete job from start to finish. When we see a carver's name on one of the old prints, he was the leader of the team and he would pass out the blocks to members of his team as he felt was appropriate. Were there any female carvers in the old days? Well, again, you're asking knowledge that I don't have any documentation of. In the old days, the prints were made by shokunin craftsmen. And in the old days, men, women were not in those fields. In any kind of a job where somebody went to work, the guy went to work, the women would stay home. And in any kind of job that was a family workshop job, the women would work. In the case of papermaking, women did most of the work rocking. It was a family workshop job. In the case of printing, there were both types. There were professional workshops, which would have been men, and then there were family workshops. And yeah, the woman there would have done lots of the printing. I saw this with the first printing workshop I visited here when I came to Japan, the Matsuzaki workshop. I had met him at a, at a demonstration one day. He asked me to visit his house. I go upstairs, and his wife is beavering away printing stuff because it was a family business. But she would have laughed if we had called her a craftsman. 
she would just be thinking, this is a family business, I'm just helping my husband. He was the craftsman. These days, there's lots. There's girls, women carving, and there's women printing. As we know here at Moko Hong Kong. It's also so funny that day. I visited Matsuzaki-san's house that day. This would be in 1989, summer of 1989, hot summer of 1989, in an old house that wasn't an air conditioned. And nobody was wearing very many clothes, very much clothing, including everybody. I tried not to look, <laughs> whatever. Nobody cared. I saw that in a bunch of places I went to, you know. It was a different country back then. So I'm saying, how do you know you've lined those up appropriately? Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. You mean, how do we know the color blocks already? We've done proof printing. This is, this is not Ami-san's proof, but we do have proof prints. She has told me, the color blocks are ready to go. You can clear this off. So I'm not sure the question, how do you know you line those up? We have tested this. She has tested it extensively upstairs, absolutely. Something to remind me about. I know today is Thursday, so Ayano-san will be making her appearance somewhere around 9 o'clock. I'll probably remember, but in case I forget, when she gets here, remind me to ask her to bring something downstairs for the show and tell. We have something we need for the show and tell today, and the reason I didn't bring it down myself is because I want to ask her to bring it down. Because when she goes up and gets it, I want to hear the scream. <laughs> but I'll probably forget, so... She made an Instagram post yesterday, and this is related to that post. And I want her to get something from the collection room. <laughs> Did you get a wrist pad for your keyboard? She's doing it on her own. I mean, she's got complete freedom to do whichever she wants here. We will buy supplies for her if she wants supplies. I'm not interfering. She knows what she needs to do. She's following her medical advice. She has set up her workstation in the way she wants to handle it. So I'm not getting her anything. She has the freedom to set it up the way she wants. And if it involves costs, we'll pay the costs. So of course. With this muda bodhi, you know, there's always the chance, you know, you're doing this and looked carefully and double check, but there's always the chance of an oh shit moment. You know, I think I'm okay today. I took off just what we needed to take off. But it's dangerous. Playing with muda bodhi is dangerous. That's another reason somebody said, you know, why don't you send it back to the original carver? That's another reason we didn't do that. The more distance and the more communication and the chance of errors, you know, what do I take off, what do I leave on? For me, doing this myself right here is far and away the safest way to do this. 
although the other staff may disagree, whatever. Kept on screen here, seems so. Okay, I think that's out, and that's out. I think both safely. Now something else in this block that needs to be fixed or, or updated, whatever, you might notice down at the corner here, there's a really strong, straight, dark line. And over here at the other registration mark, can I get it visible? The registration mark is here, but inside it, how can I show you? It's so dark here. There, there's the registration mark where my thumb is. That's where the paper goes. Paper goes in there. But before it, there's another double line. And this is a question of style. Some workshops like to leave this. Kawasaki-san has carved away the little notch, but she's left a ridge here. And some workshops like to leave a strong ridge there. So that when, they put a, when the printer puts a piece of paper they gave my kingdom for a piece of paper. When the printer puts a piece of paper in there, it doesn't fall down in the hole. In other words, the paper stays kind of flat, level. That's what we want, really. If the paper was, was bending down inside there, If the paper was like like notching and bending down inside there, then we would lose the, the delicacy of our registration. So we're, the problem of course leaving it there is you get a black line on your print. And the DOI company, you know, their own blocks, they're all full like this and the printers leave all kinds of marks and dirt on the finished prints which we have to shave off before we sell the prints. We don't do it this way. What we do is we carve the notch itself the notch itself is really quite shallow. It's only about, I don't know, 0 0.5 millimeter or something, like a sixteenth of an inch or something like that at this point. And then we take it down from there in a U to try and get this thing out of the way. And the printers have to be careful because when they're putting that paper on, if they push with their thumb too hard, the paper does fall down into the U which pulls it back here slightly and it does affect the registration. So there are workshops that don't do it Dave's way and they don't like what Dave does here. And sometimes when we send the blocks, our blocks out to an outside printer, like older guys like Kabuta-san, they're like, why do you do that, you know? And I'm like, it's okay. You can put the paper in and hold it with your thumb. You don't need to push it down. You know? In the real old days, back in the Edo period, there were never margins like this, never. The color was right to the edge, and the registration mark was right at the edge of the print. There were no borders at all in the old, old days. If you go back to the Hiroshige Hokusai days, I'm going to actually channel this out a little bit, so hang on a sec.
So something like that. It's got support for the paper as the paper comes across. The paper has support. There's a tiny little edge there, but then it goes down into a channel so there won't be any marks on the paper. But the printer has to be careful because if the printer puts too much pressure there, the paper will indeed go down into that hole and we will lose our registration. And she's done the same thing at the corners. And this is just her style. It's an older style of doing things. She's trained how she is, and I just told her, just, okay, just leave it like that, we'll clean it up, we'll do our own thing at this end, so don't worry about it. So all the years she's been working for us, she does it this way, and we're, we're cool, we'll fix it. But the whole block set now has to be cleaned up like this. The outside, I hear the jackhammers have started. Tell me what I need to do. Do I need to turn off the outside audio? Can you hear the jackhammers? Sound is good, can't hear them. I can hear them. So all this blocks it now. Amy San has done the proofing already, and she just left all these wood blocks as they were for the proofing, but now she's ready to start the main printing, and she has asked me to clean these up. So this is gonna be my job this morning, so. Someone's saying, do not remove the line of the bottom bush. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Man, I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached, you know? Yep, he's right, he's right, he's right, she's right, whatever. It looks like the poster in the back has big creases. The hanging cloth, I was hoping it would sort of settle out a little bit. And maybe when the shop is open a bit longer, well, I'll get one of the girls to, uh, to iron it. I don't have an actual iron, so uh, nothing I can do about that right now. So. Okay, yes, back to the key block. I was supposed to take out this line as well. I'm sorry, I forgot. This actually is not as trivial because some of the grass things poke up into the sea. Do I have insurance on our wood blocks? No, we don't have insurance on our wood blocks. There's no insurance company that will touch us, not for any kind of fee that we could afford. I have insurance on my home where the wood blocks are stored, and the home is now depreciated. It's now, oh, it's 30 years old this year. It's depreciated to zero. So I would get zero for fire if the fire took my house and there's no insurance on the contents because we are a business with flammable materials and we are not insurable for any kind of fee that we could possibly remotely afford. So no, we're not insured. Next question. <laughs> Light on, light off, I don't know. This is gonna be difficult, I'm sorry, with this black here. There's no way around this, Just gotta. we just gotta get this done. My home has no value anymore. It's now 30 years old and it has no value at all. Uh, the property has some value, not much, but something. But the building itself has no value. It's depreciated to zero. 
the Japanese way of building homes is 30 year lifespan and my building is now over 30 years and it's not considered to be, to be uh, usable anymore. If I was a, a, an actual typical Japanese person, a typical Japanese family, what I would be doing at this point, 30 years, would be hauling in a company to put a new roof on, then we would have the siding done, foundation would be, have to look at, foundation is probably okay. Typical residential housing in Japan is built the last 30 years. It is changing bit by bit. Some of the new housing companies are promising longer lifespans, but uh, tell that to the insurance companies. It's also technology. By, by having a system like this, the, the society slash government, having a system like this, it means that in general most older construction is replaced fairly quickly, meaning you've always got a lot of stuff with new building codes. Things that are run to old codes and that are not fire safe, whatever, remove themselves from the system. But yeah, Japan is weird. Japan is really weird compared to most other places. There's a lot, a lot of factors involved. People in general don't want to live in a used house or a house that was built, owned, or lived in by somebody else. They don't like the feeling of living in a home that somebody else has lived in. I'm speaking in general terms of Japanese culture, Japanese people. So the idea that a house or something would be constructed and would then be usable for hundreds of years, this idea is laughable in Japan. Temples are a different story, of course. People want a new house. And then, of course, with, with regulations and zone, not zoning, you know, building codes and stuff changing all the time, with modern technology making buildings stronger and stronger against earthquakes, the old buildings are expected to remove themselves from the stock. My house with 30-year-old earthquake technology should be removed from the, from the town and replaced with a house that was built to modern building codes. We've seen this happen. You know, when I moved here, it was 1986, the summer autumn of 1986. We moved into a, an apartment building in Hamura town, which is the next town to where my current house is in Ome. And it was sort of a new suburb. It was an area that had been farms, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Farms that serve the city. I know, not countryside farms, but farms that, that supply vegetables to the city. Oh, hi, Wizaimas. Uh, it, was, it was a region that was being converted from this kind of farmland into housing. So our, our building was brand new. We were the first tenant in that apartment building. And a bunch of new houses had gone up in rows. This is 1986. Population is still growing. Tokyo is still growing. And a new school went up in our area. It had gone up the year before, two years before. So my kids went to a school building that was actually brand new, a brand new school. Tomorrow, thank you. Presents, presents, no idea what it's from, no idea. Anyway, they went to a brand new school. That was 1986, so the school would have built in 1984, 1985. I went past that town a while ago on the train, and the school is being retrofitted. It's considered not earthquake safe anymore. So it was huge steel and concrete, you know, a box type structure, and it's being retrofitted with massive giant steel X girders which go from the ground up to the top of the third floor. So there's like one, two, three, four of these massive X's 
that cover the outside of the building that are, I guess, going to be holding it up in the case of an earthquake. That was built in 1984, and it's now considered not safe for kids. And I'm okay with this, you know. If society can actually afford this, me and all of our taxes, I guess. So for the individual houses, it's up to you. For structures like schools and stuff, whatever, that's what they're doing. 30 years is where you're at. In all your years of carving, have you ever felt burned out? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's too much fun. How can you burn out with one of these? I'm busy. There are things I would rather be doing. I really, really, really would like to be making some more YouTube videos. I'm, I'm not so happy with the way that I'm buried in business work these days. Absolutely. Am I burned out and want to head to the beach? No, of course not. I don't understand that, that, kind, of a tech, that kind of a phraseology. But am I happy with the way my life is going right now? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, not to be sarcastic, but that burnout, fa that, that phrase that I hear people talking about burnout, I, I don't, I don't, know, I don't understand that. You know. But organization, we really, 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 and I mean really need, I uh, need help with organization and getting things, because you know, the YouTube video situation now is getting critical. Is the old music shop still there? Old music shop. I'm not quite sure what you mean. You mean the place I used to work back in Canada? No, they're there bought out and bankrupt long, long, long ago. Is that what you mean? The old music shop. It was called Northwest Musical Services. They got bought out long ago. The owner passed it on to his son and he sold it up. And the new owner closed it down. They just wanted to buy the competition. <sighs> Who bought them out? Yeah, they were bought out by a company called Long & McQuaid. This all happened in Vancouver. This is years ago. This is decade, 30 years ago, I guess. No idea. So our company was called Northwest Musical Services. It was bought out after the owner died, after Bill died. His son sold it to Long & McQuaid, who were one of our bigger competitors. So they won in the end. Well, I was long out of it by then. Okay, let's get rid of this black block. It's just too difficult for you guys to see. Next one. Working our way through the stack here. We found some reasonable wood for this, you know, making a reproduction of a shin hunger print like this. It's all very well. The carving is actually not too difficult. There's not a whole lot of delicate fine lines. You've got to organize your work well, decide what's going on. But the critical, critical part is the quality of the wood. This is a sample print printed from the old doy blocks. And that wood was beautiful, rich, solid, perfect grain wood. The wood that I had available to me is less so. And you can see, here's one of the blocks for the C area. And I hunted and hunted and hunted, trying to find one that had a minimum amount of problem areas. 
Now there are problem areas. There's a bit right here. Can you see it? You can see some of these places. Where is it? Right here. This is a, there's a knot here. There's a bit that's too hard. You can see it. And there is some wood grain visible. I was really, really nervous about this. And I, I asked the girls to help me choose the wood before we started carving, before I sent it out for carving. And we think we can get away with this, even though there's a little knot there and another piece of hard wood grain here. We think we can get away with it because the C on this block is laid up of one, two, three, four. There's four different blocks laid up to make this thing. There's a, a light colored block, a darker one, some more ripples, some more ripples. So because there's so many blocks on top of each other, we think we can get away with having little knots and specks on any given one of them, hoping that they will sort of cancel out. Hoping, that's not a way to run a business, is it? Hoping, but you know what I mean. Expecting, planning that they will cancel each other out. Dave dies and the staff sells up going on a cruise ship. <laughs> Sell to who? Nobody could buy this building, no, no, this, this business. This is sort of our problem. It's, it's what they call a key man business. It's still what they call a key man business. We're trying to spread the knowledge among the organization. We're trying to spread the know-how. We're trying to get people trained. We're trying to make it less and less of a key man business. But even though at the production end, I am out of a lot of the production. You know, we've got printers here, we've got carvers here. Even though I'm out of the production side to a large extent, I'm still the key man in terms of people, hey, there's Mokohankan, that's Dave's business, let's go buy some prints, you know, whatever. So can they survive without me? Would people still want to buy the Mokohankan products? I don't know. We, we've joked about this before, talked about this before, you know. Do people still want to buy Kentucky Fried Chicken after the Colonel is dead? Well, yeah, they put a plastic model of the Colonel outside. He's here, come on in and buy some chicken. We've talked about this before. What's the best plan for Mokohankan in the future? I don't know. Here's the main sky block. This was the one, this is the one that still, it gives me nightmares. I think we're okay. We have a good strong piece of wood, not too much problem with it. And this one doesn't have overlays. It's one sky block. It's printed a number of times. It's printed, it's printed I know, a light blue down, down this far. It's printed a vermilion up this far. It's printed again with a darker blue down this far and maybe even one more at the top. So it's got like at least four impressions all on the same piece of wood. So there's no overlay. If we've got a dead piece of wood here, I mean a bit of hard grain, which we do, look at this, one, two, three. And it's in the same place on all those blocks. Plan B, if it turns out that that's too visible, is we hunt up another piece of wood and simply replicate this block again, carve two sky blocks. That's quite doable. It doesn't take a lot of doing. There's no uh, little patterns everywhere. So plan B is <coughs> one more sky block and we will use both of them, A and B, A and B. If we add too much water to the block, does the texture become more prominent? No, the other way around. If we want to bring out wood grain, we keep the amount of paste and pigment low. We keep it low and we use a very wet paper, moist paper, and we use extremely strong barren pressure. That will give you a strong wood grain if you've got wood grain to work with. If you don't want to see the wood grain, 
you have to, in, uh, you have to, I know, which way around did I say that? To show wood grain, you keep the amount of pigment on the low side and your pressure on the high side. To hide the grain, you bring up your paste pigment mix more, and if you don't want to get a deeper color, just add more paste, 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 and you use a lighter pressure with your baron. That will give you less wood grain. I'm not speaking of the modern work where they are trying to show wood grain. They've carved on a piece of pine and all that kind of stuff. In, in prints like ours where we are trying to hide the wood grain. Is it possible that Mario... Yeah, we have the Ukiwe Heroes here in the shop. We don't have them online. Jed is the only online source for the Ukiwe Heroes prints but we have them in the shop, or we try and keep them in the shop as much as possible. What we do is we buy wood, Ukiwe Heroes prints back from Jed. We make the prints, we supply them to Jed, he orders them from our stock, he signs them, seals them, and sells them, and we buy back from Jed at a wholesale price some of the Ukiwe Heroes prints, and we put them in the shop here. We try and keep them all in stock, but we run out of stock sometimes because uh, we, they have to be sent over to Jed for signing. There's the prints, the Ukiwe prints here in the shop were made here, went over to Jed's place, he signed and sealed them, got them in his shop, and then we bought them back. It was sold out online, Mario. We just sent him dozens of copies. He's got tons of them. What do you mean sold out? Has he got his website turned off again or something? If you're looking for the rickshaw cart print, the Mario cart print, the woodblock version, we have dozens of them just waiting for Jed to take them. He's busy. He doesn't organize that part of his work well, you know. Whatever. At the moment, all of the Ukiyo heroes are available. We've got stock of all of them. And if Jed doesn't have stock of all of them, wake him up. No way to buy a button for that print. Well, write a letter to Jed, because we've got him here. We're just waiting for him to take him off our hands. It's not his main uh, business, you know. He's busy, conventions, all that kind of stuff. His online orders for his own stuff, the Jikle prints. He's flooded with work, design work. He's got private commissions. He's got all kinds of stuff he does. So the, the UQA Heroes Woodblock prints are not really his big priority right now. I'll be in Tokyo for November 12th, I'll pick one up. Okay, write to me first, because as I said, we get out of them sometimes. So whether or not we will have that one in stock the day you're here, write a note to Ayano-san here. Write to info at mokohankan.com and ask her about this, just to make sure. Don't come here specifically, because it's sometimes out of stock. Do they need to be signed? Yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. All the Ukiwe Heroes prints, this is Jed's IP. We do not sell them ourselves. We make the physical prints. They sit here in my storeroom until Jed asks for some. We then send them over to him, sell them to him, you know, for the paper, the, you know, our own production cost. He then signs and seals them. And all the Heroes prints that have gone out into the world are signed and sealed by Jed. So we make them and they sit here until he calls. 
have you got any Marios? I said, yeah, I've got, how many, I've got 76, how many do you want? And he takes another 30 or so, buys them from us at that wholesale price for the prints. And we ourselves don't sell them, we can't. We've got them here, but they're not signed and sealed and they can't go out into the world. It's his IP, he's the publisher. We are just the manufacturer. We've said this before many times, he's Apple and we are Foxconn. We make the things for him. Am I online? I'm probably doing half of this off, off view of the camera, you know, I'm not being careful enough here. So it is on his website. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. You know. <clears throat> How's our time? I was going to get onto the surfer. I didn't think this was going to take this long. I've been fooling around too much and watching the chat too much, maybe. I don't know. Here's a different example. And you've got the, we've got the registration mark here. Let's zoom out a bit. Push, pull in, push out. No, what? Pull, pull out, pushing. Oh, Jesus. Whatever, the registration mark in this case is right next to the clouds. So when the printer comes to be putting the paper on, just give me a piece of paper, simple little piece of paper. When the printer comes, oops, when the printer comes, they put the pigment on and it's going to be on the clouds, then the printer's going to take a piece of paper and put it in here. And Kawasaki and again, she had left that big ridge and that ridge almost certainly would have picked up pigment and then there's no way to avoid it. When you put it in here, it's going to get a rid. So I'm taking it off, but the printer has to be really careful because if the printer jams their thumb on this like this, down the paper goes, the paper goes into this thing and it moves it this way. As you push down ever so slightly, the paper is pulled in like this. So the registration wouldn't work. So the printer at this point has to be careful. You got to put it in that slot you got to put it in that slot and only very lightly press down on it. What's this? Change in quarantine period after return to Japan. That's the last one. They're ready to go back to Amisan for, for more of her proofing and work. Okay, thanks for the side. Sorry about the sidetrack. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Anthony, pull, pull out, zoom in, pull out. Got it. Why not place the Kento a bit more to the right so the ridge can stay and not get pigment on? We can't move it. I know what the question there, Tom1060 is saying. The, the registration mark here, this is, this is the Kagi and this is the Hikitsuke. And together the two of them make up the registration marks. It looks like a simple thing to say. He's saying, why is this here? That's where the pigment is. Why not move it a bit to the right? Two reasons why we don't move it. One, through the whole set of blocks that make up any given print, these two things stay in exactly the same place. If, if the printer before starting cut their paper at a perfect 90 and a perfect straight, 
then this line, the edge of the paper, would be perfectly straight and it wouldn't matter where this was. The paper would still register in the same place each time. That's theoretical. In real life, the line may be a little bit wavery. And the registration, if you've got one registration mark here, and the next block it's here, and the next block it's here, you're registering at a different part of the edge of the paper. And the chance of those things being in or out, in or out, in or out, are really very high. We keep that in exactly the same place. I'm talking about distance from here. If that's 20 centimeters, they're all 20 centimeters, period. So we don't want to move it because the paper, the sheet of paper, might have a curve on the edge at that point. The other reason we don't want to move it in is simple physics. I threw away my piece of paper, so I don't have a piece of paper. Let's find another piece of paper. Ideally, that mark should be farther out. The farther out that it is, then as you move it in or out, think of what's happening over here. This moves, you've got a leverage. It's pinpointed to the edge here. And if you move out a tiny bit here, it moves more at the other side. You've, you've multiplied it. If I, oh, it's Ayano-san. My God, already, already, already. Ayano-san, Ayano-san. Hi. Finish I asked them that when you came here to remind you to do something for me. Oh, nice coffee smell. <laughs> Strong coffee smell. Uh, going it's, upstairs? Yes, yes. I know it's to do with the show and tell. I, know I came down, we're going to look at you know the show and tell. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. some of the, your Instagram posts yesterday. But I'd like a reference book. <coughs> can I ask you, before, <coughs> excuse me, grab your coffee. Can you go to my room? Hi. You don't need to go inside. Just sort of look inside the tatami room. On the left-hand side, right there, right where you can reach before going in the room, there are two big albums. Okay. Take a peek inside Hi. and you'll know what to do. I will know what to do. Okay. You might need, you might need this for reference, but you will know what to do before 9.30 for show and tell. Okay, this. She's got her own work she wants to do, but actually there's no, there's no big flood of orders overnight. You're okay, you're okay. Do this first, please. Okay. You'll see, you'll, you'll understand. I'll see. I yep, 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 yep. You'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. They're complaining, you're four minutes early. They've got it in capital letters, four minutes early. Four minutes early. What's worse is at the other end now, she's been staying later and later and later, right? I don't know, yes, I wasn't here, but the day before, it was way after 6.30. Mm, she's a good girl, she always just stuff to do, and she wants to clean it up and package it and get it finished. I get it, it's okay. No, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. She wants to answer emails, of course, I get it. I'm not really complaining. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 9.15, not 9.30, 9.15, they're reminding me. So, 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 so. So leave that stuff. Oh. That's just oh, Amazon, Amazon stuff and home stuff. Oh. Where was I? Yeah, the point being, the, the closer in we move this thing, the worse it gets. A tiny movement here results in a huge movement over here. If we move it far out, then a small movement here results in a small movement here. So we want them to be out as far as possible. But if it's right at the edge of the wood like this, it's sometimes difficult to hold the paper. So we normally put it just like this. So we've got a good grip on the paper, right corner, left corner, down she goes. And this one just happens to be in the wrong place. That's too bad. It's more important to keep the position the same far more important. How do we pay our employees? There's all different kinds. Ayana-san is a salaried employee. She gets a salary. We did heavy negotiations on how much she got, and she's a salary. She gets the same each month. And there are legal working hours are sort of standardized and set by the, the Labor Standards Bureau or something, whatever. And I don't even remember all the details of it. But a person who's a salary is expected to do like basically five days a week, eight hours a day, lunch break, that's a salaried employee. A Saturday, Sunday, nothing, and national holidays off. Then after the first six months, they get 10 days holiday per year. So that's the sort of situation with someone like Ayano. The printers upstairs don't do that. They don't want this. They don't want to come five days a week. 
Ishikawa Sun comes two days a week, Suga Sun comes one, two, or three days a week, depending on what she feels like it. They are not hourly employees, they are not salaried employees, they are what's called dekidaka. They get paid for the work that they do. And so that all depends. The faster ones and the more accurate ones get more money than the slower ones, than the slower ones do. Kubota-san, he is so happy. He thinks he's died and gone to heaven. One, he's working at home, doesn't have to go to his office at Adachi anymore. Two, he gets paid way, way more per sheet than he was earning ever as a salaried employee there. Like, he, he thinks we're crazy. And he says this many times. Well, he's, how much for this one? I'm like, mm, 2750 We're trying to keep it about 20% of the retail price. I've told you many times, Kubota-san, you know, we're trying to keep it 20, 25% of the retail price. That's a printer's fee. And he says, really? It's okay to take that much? <laughs> he's like, whatever. <laughs> Only 10 days a year, that's not much joy, we get 30. We're talking about, I mean, this is 10 days just for that person. They're already off weekends and they're already off national holidays. Whatever, this is uh, 10 days a year, but almost no Japanese salaryman takes his 10 days a year. And it's 10 for the first year, then it grows and grows bit by bit as you've been with the company longer. Yeah, Kabodasan is exactly this. Like, where were these guys 30 years ago? <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> but the slow ones, it's tougher. It's slow ones. That's where our trainee premium comes in. You've seen the thing on our shopping cart. Please pay a five percent extra for our trainee premium. Because what we do is, we're not monsters here. There's two cases where, under my system, the printer doesn't actually get enough. One is where they are fairly young and really slow at this or whether they have chosen a job with me that takes way, way longer than another job. So they only get X, X per hour. And then the case where a lot of the prints turn out to be no good. If I send 60 sheets and 55 are good and five aren't, I pay for the 55, deal closed, it's all finished. But if I send, where is it? So. I sent this batch of prints out to an unnamed printer a while ago. This was a couple of months back. I sent this group out. They came back, and they're all unsaleable. So now what happens? This is an experienced printer. It came back. We had not communicated well. The prints came back. I can't sell them. So now what do we do? So what we do is we pay a kill fee. They're no good. They're not going to go out. I can't pay him the fee per print that it would normally be. As I said, 25% of the retail price for this one. So we make a kill fee, and that comes from the money that people have donated to us, the trainee premium. It's to allow inexperienced printers and whatever to get their money, even though it's not actually economically possible. And don't ask me, we're not going to sell these, of course. What was wrong with them was the, the texture, the sky. It was unbearable. There's no way we could. The print looks good from a distance where you are. Zoom, it's a pull, pull out, push in. There's just no way. It had an awful, awful texture on all of these skies. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Was that fun, the show? Hi. Was that fun? Yeah. Was that fun? Cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be late with that. The thing is, the thing is, that's not a full set. The full set is 100, and I think there are 25 in each of these albums. Or it could be 33. It may be I have two out of three, or I have two out of four. I don't know. I so this, you didn't I haven't looked yet. I just <laughs> what happened this morning? I mean, you know, you did the Instagram post yesterday, yeah, yesterday. show, and I didn't say anything about it. This morning. This morning. I get up and I'm, I'm, I sort of woke up with my alarm clock. Nobody goes off at six o'clock. This morning I get up. Or there's something heavy on my legs. And what happened was during the night, I had, I had been maybe tossing and turning. I had kicked that, and the album fell on my feet. So during the middle of the night, that album was leaning on my feet. So I get up in the morning, what is this? Open it up. No way! So, you saw it right there. So right there, Well, what, you you posted yesterday. I should have, you know, right? You, you so so so. Demo, what a I forgot we had those. Wow. I forgot we had them. But they're not all there. So before the stream, can you hunt up? Can you find the one that matches? You know, the one with the Yana Usuka Usuka Toka. Hi, So, you, can I steal your time? You know, I think you're okay this morning. Show. So.
Yeah, Karen knows what's going on here. Yes, yeah, so, so. It's not her Instagram, it's our Instagram, but she's the, I mean, she's the, the tanto. What do you call it in English? She's the, she's the person doing our Instagram, mostly. Sometimes what another son does, it still or not Sometimes anymore. Or it's, it's, yeah, but she, yeah, that's right, that's right. I don't know, Gakari, that's not English. <laughs> What's the name, the person in the company who's responsible for the Instagram account, what would you call this person? We say tanto, that's the person doing this. I don't know, no idea. Social media manager or something, I guess, I don't know. So, social director, no, social director is something else. Dave has a billion yen under his bed that he forgot about. I don't have anything under my bed. I don't have a bed. A bed. I haven't had a bed in 50 years. I don't know. So you're just looking for the one with... Well, well, I'd like to show side by side. There's the sample, you know, the one that had all those markings too, too, too light. We showed the online image, but the online image is so different. It was you know. actually that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Dave, Dave, work, 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 work. Yeah, I have no mattress, I just sleep on my money. Yeah, right. <laughs> that thing about sleeping on a, a bed or a thorn or something, you know, I just could not do this anymore. When I was visiting Canada in the last spring, you know, my daughter here, you want to use this room? And I'm like, no thanks. So I just slept in the living room, I know. They, they have a, they have a, uh, she has a little yoga mat, so she put a yoga mat out and I slept on her yoga mat, so. Do you prefer hot, I, I don't Yeah, know. I, I can sleep right there on that floor. You, I can lay down and five minutes later I'm asleep. So. Right. And she yeah. gave me a yoga mat because it looked a bit friendly, you know. Yeah. You stay with your daughter and like, <laughs> your dad's staying with you. Do you have a bedroom? No, he sleeps on the floor. <laughs> Can't you take care of your dad better than that, you know? I can't sleep on the floor for a long time. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm too used to sleeping on the bed. I can't bear it. It's just it's too soft and soggy. Doesn't it give you a no backache or something? Not yet. So I've come so far, seventy one years, so there was that one too. I, I got invited to Toronto to the Toronto International Film Festival a few years ago, you know. And because I was a star, I was in one of the documentaries that was at the film festival, you know. So, so they gave me the thing. They picked me up at the airport in this limo and all this kind of stuff. And, they, and they take me, you know, well, that's fine, whatever, limo drive from the airport, that's fine. But they take me downtown to the hotel. And it's, I forget the name, Four Seasons Spectacular Mandarin something. I don't even remember the name. And I'm upstairs on the 27th floor, and there's this, like, there's this big suite. And there's this bed, and it's as big as my room upstairs here, you know. <laughs> and I, I, no, I tried it. I, Anthony, I tried. I got in the bed that night, and I'm lying there, and like 10 minutes later, I'm still awake. So I can't do this. So I grabbed it, cover, threw it in the floor, and I slept on the floor. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. I don't know. So. Mm -hmm. Do I sleep flat on my back or am I side sleeper? We're not going with this conversation. No, I'm a belly sleeper. I'm face down, unconscious. Bang! That's it. Face down, unconscious. Do we have any matches? Because like I said, I don't have the whole set, so I don't know. Are you finding anything? I have some matches, but I'm looking for the one with, uh, with the scribble. Okay. It would be too bad we come this far and got lucky like that and then not to have that one, I guess. Uh, can't be helped. Yeah, because uh, you're missing some, uh, some chapters now. There's a, I'm missing a, at least one volume and then some are torn out, some are missing, you sure? Okay, you can get the conversation of what's going on. The prints that she showed on Instagram and the prints that we've been looking at in the show and tell the past couple of days, I learned this morning that I actually do have the originals. You know. Oh, Aimee san, hi, hi, good morning. Aimee san's here, she wants her blocks to be picked up. So, Omaha wa ichiban ushiro kana? No, kono, chigao, kono naka. Oh, yeah, kore deo? Okay. 
、はいはいはい、ですが、次のステップ、さっきの、なんちゅうの、あの、うんね、そう、だから、まだ、あの、教具作り取ってないです。うんうんうんでもあれあ,あれはあのどっち屋根の両方屋根とあの、うん、そうそうそうまだまだ座ってない、うん、昨日ど大目行ったんだし、うん、全然座らなかった,たそうそうそうまあとりあえず多分そこまで今日行かないからオッケーオッケーオッケーそうそうだけど今日帰る前に、うん、もう今日全部このそうだから教具ずり考えて、うん、はいこの辺のはもうとりあえずはいいの今あのこのここモルボリとあったそれからこの中の引き付けとか剣と、はい、あの、はいね、あの綺麗にそう、はい、それだけですねはいわかりますごめん箱ありますが、今、ごめん新聞紙を全部、今ちょっとやりながらやってます。Yeah, that's it. Just walk into the room, face down on the floor, sleep. That's me. I'm sorry. That's it. I'm, I'm the boringest guy in the world, you know. Back a lifetime ago, many, many years ago, 40, how many years ago? 30 odd years ago, when I still lived with another person. This was trouble for her, you know. I'd brush my teeth first, go into the room, she's out brushing her teeth. By the time she gets in, I am unconscious, I'm gone. So, <laughs> hey, wake up, wake up. Oh, oh morning already? Uh, hey, lucky? Lucky, nothing. Unlucky, this. <coughs> Oh, the one with all the markings? It's not in there. Oh, really? Soka, soka. Do we have anything to compare then? Do we have some, the same yeah, print in and out? Okay, okay, stuff. okay. Ah, soka, soka. Go on, go on, go on. So it's coming. The Matsushima print now is coming. The blocks are okay. Aimi-san's doing okay. Can I trust you to do a good job on this? <laughs> She just laughs. Who knows? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're talking to the lady that two years ago was our number one Shin Hunger printer three years ago. So I can't concentrate. What was it, guys? 9, 12. Okay, to tell the story, the, the, the thing that I understand is doing right now, those old prints that we found in the auction goods that we've looked at in the past couple of sessions, I'm not sure if I should, well, I have no choice. I have to admit this. It turns out that that set of prints, the ones that Koringami linked to during the last stream, we actually have the set of prints upstairs. So, there's two things you can think about there. One is that if we kind of have too many prints, that's true. And second is Dave like, didn't even remember this, which means like, we really have too many prints. When the owner of the collection doesn't even remember what's in the collection, this is not good. And、uh, my only excuse at the moment is that our collection at the moment is simply it's growing, it's, a bit, it's accumulating. Because the opportunity to buy is there, because this stuff is there on Yahoo auctions, because it is mostly cheap, and because we do have the resources, we are gathering in at the moment more prints than we have time to study and research and look at. This is my excuse. And that set is one such, and we must have actually shown it here on Show and Tell sometime in the past couple of years. It would have come up on auctions, I would have bought it, and one morning I must have shown it to you hey, look at these cool prints that we got. And then upstairs it went. And it gets forgotten. But I'm a little disappointed in myself that when these things came up in the last stream, that I didn't recognize wait a minute, I think that's upstairs somewhere. I was zero. And I didn't find it until, as, as I was telling her, last night I kicked something nearby, it fell over. And this album, I woke up, this album was falling over my feet. So, so somebody up there is trying to help me out on this. So. Yeah, the Genji set we have also. That's a different set. I knew we had those, but I didn't know we had this 100 poem set. And we don't have the whole thing. I understand it's digging through at the moment. She's trying to find matches. Also, they're all glued in to show, I understand? Heavily glued in, right? 
Do we have that one with the gradation at the top then? You know, the one that, that has the funny green gradation. Ah, that, that would be a cool one to show. Mm. No, so. Oh, unlucky. Lucky. Oh, it's show and tell time. It's 9.15. This has been a mixed stream this morning. I'm sorry. Really, really sorry about this. It's been chaos. So, nice. Do we have any that match up then, Aina-san? We do have some uh, pairs. Okay, we got some pairs. All right. Okay, so you've heard the news from her that we, we do have pull out, right? There was a time when I was collecting comics. I could tell you if I had the book just by looking at the cover. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> I used to be like this, but now my excuse is, as I said, we're in an accumulation stage. So what's, what's, what are you planning here? Oh, you're going to come around here. Is that the idea? Oh, in that case, then I should get the, you know, I should, I should have thought about this. I should get the uh, GoPro ready then. Okay, it's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Set up as you wish. <laughs> okay, so she wants to move here. Okay, 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 okay. In that case, GoPro. Okay, just a minute here then. Turn this thing on. Okay, it's going to take me a minute to set this up, so hang on one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Oh, it's not plugged in. Just a minute. Helps to plug in the camera if you're trying to use it. Use it. Use it. All right, just a sec. Okay, this might be the way to do this. Let's see. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit on the stool there? I guess, uh, yeah, I'm going to sit on the stool and it's um, all the prints we use. Okay, okay, and I'll put some prints here on the desk, okay. So, so I will need the big one, right, because you can't, so yeah, yeah. the big one goes here, okay. The big one goes there. And did you mark the pages or something, or what did you do? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just okay. picked okay, up. Okay, okay, okay. So what am I doing? Okay, this is an example. There, I have two of these, and I'm not sure if there were four or three. 25 prints in each one? If that's the case, when there would be four of them. If there's maybe 30 or 33 prints or something, then there would be three of them. I really don't know. So this is the album. This is from 1932. The 1932. And is this is heavy. This is what fell on my feet last night. <laughs> Two books. That was quite heavy. You know, long it was. It was. <laughs> and here's how the album came. It's got like a little bit of a glass scene to protect the prints. And each of the prints is here. And... Nani, Yugiri, Nancy, no? Yugiri, Yugiri, I don't know the poem. There, there, anyway, there's a hundred prints in the set, and the, 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 the prints that you saw the other day are coming like this. So what am I doing here? Um, am I flipping through till we find the one that you've got there? Mm, oh, there it is, yeah. right there, right there. Here it is, right one. No, there. right there. Oh, this is an in interesting one. Okay, it is interesting. Okay, she's looked at it more than I have. So, oh my God. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. So this is clearly, oh, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh my God, there's so much story to tell here. Oh my God, I can't do this, I can't. Okay, there's the finished print. Now we gotta go back. Oh no, how do I do this? Let me hold this up for you. What do you see here? This sheet of paper has a bunch of holes cut in it. And the holes, I think we're going, the holes match the bamboo leaves here. Where am I here? Where's my finger? The holes match the bamboo leaves. What's going on is they have, how do I explain this? 
they're using it like a stencil to find the registration mark. John Becker, he's here today or not here, I think, no, he's in Australia, he's not here today. He can tell you a story of the one time when I was making a prints and I cut off the registration marks by mistake because I wasn't sure what I was doing. So I had to find the location of the registration marks. So what you do is you get one of your prints partway finished. You do this, you cut out with a knife the bamboo leaves. Then you get your bamboo block, you put this on the block, you put this physically, there's a leaf, I can see it, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, and now you can see the corner of your paper, you know where the registration mark is. So you draw the registration mark and away you go. And these guys, somebody's done exactly the same thing. He's cut out, he has cut out the bamboo leaves. It's crazy, it's crazy to see the same technique happening, something I've done in my own workshop to try and recover from a screw-up. Oh. And here's a guy in 1932 I doing exactly the same people, thing. But you just invented it, but someone had already that... Um, well, then, no, it's not inventing, it's something that any printer would do when, once he's in that situation. How do I find the corner mark? What else is different? I really don't know, I've had no time to study these. Myself. So this one looks pretty similar to show. Pretty similar. I'm looking for something else to come. I've seen this now just here for the first time, you know. There's lacquer, do you see? There's lacquer on this. They've put lacquer, pull out, push, there we go, got it. Let me switch back, man, let's get back to the other setup for a second here, hang on a sec. Cut it, cut it, cut it, look. They've put lacquer, I don't know if you can see it, you, see in the cam in the, you can see it on the screen here, they can see it easily. Mm. Look at that, they've put sparkly stuff on the wings of this dragonfly. Okay. And here's your cutout. There's one of your cutouts here, and that allowed them to put this piece of paper on the block, on the green block, and find the location of the registration mark. When I saw that, I just laughed and laughed and laughed that somebody in 1932 is just doing the same, the same funky little technique to try and find the registration mark that I was, you know. So, so, so. Hi. I don't know what we're gonna, what's, oh, look at that stuff. My God, look at that. We don't have this one, do we? No, we don't, unfortunately. Look at this. How can I show? There's, there's, uh, no, it's showing old-fashioned money, and most of them are made just with embossing. We got to get these photographed and put online, you know. No, I can't. There's no point trying to show you under this terrible light. We got to get these photographed. All the money and the symbols and the marks on them are all done with thick embossing. No, that was a test print, Vivid Sun. Why would they be doing that thing with the registration marks? I'm really not sure. There's no reverse engineering happening here. The block had already been carved to print those leaves. The leaves had been printed from a block, but for some reason, the reg location of the registration marks had become un un unclear or unthink. And maybe it was a I've done this also before, where we have moved the registration marks, and that's the only way to find where they go on each of the color blocks. So no reverse engineering, it's part of the process. So on, so, and Koringami's saying too, external kento, that could be. So you've got your external kento, and where is it gonna be? That's one way to find out. You cut the leaves out, put your paper over the green leaves, and now you can find out where the corner should be. So yes, indeed, it could have been to line up an external kento. I'm just flipping through it. Did you, you didn't check them. Which ones of these we've got? Which ones we don't have? Oh, well, I actually have like five, only five prints. Okay, here. but I can't so see. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm just watching. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't watching the page before. No, 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 no. no.
We're trying to find one where we have both copies. We're trying to find a match. Is that are they in the other book or something? Or hmm. uh, in both books. I'm not finding anything that matches what you've got there. Ayuna <laughs> san. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. I don't know. I'm really unhappy we don't have the one that matches the usuku. Uh, Rabbits. No. Look at that moon. Ah! Pull out, push in. The entire moon, it's done with embossing and there's, a, there's an old ca uh, temple and it's all blinged up, shiny. My God, we've got to get these online at some point. We've got to get these online. I don't understand. We've got to find one that matches. Where are they all? In the other book? Where is the other book? You, you've got it. Like each book gets like two, three. Oh, we've got this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we got one, we got one, we got one. It looks almost the same. I don't mm. see any big difference with this one at all. It looks like just we've got a finished print. I guess that's why there's no scribbles, you know. There's no more need for usuku or koku because it looks matching. That looks like a finished print. To show? Yeah. Yeah. This one too, the, the gradation at the top is not done like we saw that green one the other day, you know. So. Oops, the page is torn out. Yeah. Ah, soka, soka, soka. This album is not in good condition. So pre uh, some previous owner tore out a bunch of the prints, tore out a bunch of the pages. I understand, I'm not finding anything else. <laughs> I got the wrong, I gave me the wrong album to show. Wrong, we got uh, Well, we got a couple, okay, 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 okay. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, uh, No, no more matches. Okay. All right. Give me that book instead. We got the wrong, wrong album here. Hey, careful, there's a page falling out of it. Hey. 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 Yeah, it's pink ripped out. So put them so I, can, so I can spread them out so I can see the designs there. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. one. Bingo, the scarecrow mm -hmm. with the maple leaves. Hey, good, good, good. We have this one. Hey. So there's our proof copy. And again, unfortunately, I'm sorry, this is not one of the ones that has markings written on it. And it seems, again, it seems pretty similar to the one that was finally published. So. So whether this is another proof copy or whether this is just you know a, just a leftover from the edition, it could be it's a, a reject. Because look at this, the one we have has an actual hole in it, so it could be this print then wasn't actually a proof copy, but it was a copy from the batch, but it couldn't be sold because there was a defect in the paper and it ended up with a with a hole in it. And I don't think this hole is from any registration business. So I think this is just a reject print. So there's not going to be anything specific to learn from that one. Another one torn out and missing. There are a hundred of them, so yeah.
another one torn out missing. Didn't we have that one? No, no we had a boat. We, have we had a different boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got this one. This one. But again, no, no special difference. Look at this again. Looks like we've got a good copy. So this is not a proof copy. Sky is a bit different. Lighter blue, darker blue. I wonder how many editions of this were made. I don't know how many times they reprinted it. It wasn't a limited edition kind of thing. So as they sold it, they would just print up some more copies, print up some more. Yeah, there's colored tones difference. Quite a lot of color tone differences here, here and there. The green is different. The blue is different. But no comments on this one. That one with Mount Fuji to show, I really, oh, really, oh, do we have that one? Oh, did we do it? Yeah. Is it there? Yeah. Okay, because that's the one I really would like to look at. It's here. It's here. Okay. So, one in one of those. Well, it wasn't in the last one, so let's keep going. There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, 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 good, 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 good. Yeah, look at this, oh, I see, I see, I see, okay. Very much a proof copy then, all right. At this proof stage, it was still just a black triangle, and at the finish stage, pull out, push in. It's a whole pattern. It's printed in gold, uh, gold or, or colored pigment on top. Hey, and another gold part here. So, and then look. There's all these gold clouds. Lots of differences. So this is all bare. This is all bare on the copy we have. And it's full of clouds. Hmm. Oh, look at that. I see. Okay, something I thought was a mistake on our copy. There's the gold-colored clouds here, and this cloud extends past the mountain out into the sky. I thought this was a mistake, and they would be chopping it off later. No, it's also on this one. The cloud goes right here over the front of the mountain. It goes out into the sky. See the tail? So it's the idea, the clouds are in front of Mount Fuji, so they didn't need to chop it off. Of course, I was an idiot. It doesn't have to be chopped off. That cloud can easily go out into the open sky. Yeah, lots of changes here. You know, the black is different, lots of detail missing. There's clouds all the way through here. There's nothing on our sample copy. There's something here that, look at this. This is green from these leaves. It wasn't carved out deeply enough. So they made a blot. So somebody must, of course, come along and they carved it out deeper. It's so much fun to see the proof copies. Wow. I really wish we had that one, though, that so when the, the marking, the, <laughs> guy testing it said, make it more light, make it more dark, and we don't have the matching copy of that one. Oh. Uh, you're going to look for that. Okay. So what's your plan? Are you going back on Insta then today to update with some pictures like this, now that we can do the same thing? Okay. I hope I can find like a, the one with the, you know, sort of Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's leave it there. It's a bit frantic, I'm sorry. We just, you know, as I said, I discovered this morning that we had this one, so I thought let's just show it. It might have made more sense to wait and put them side by side. But anyway, 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 here they are. And the, the cool thing about this auction, you saw the price to show. I did. 710 yen. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah, but there is cool. one person here who is very unhappy. And that's Watanabe Sam. Because she, she wanted that package of prints for the flea market. It was supposed to be added so, to the flea market. So. And sometimes she and I, sometimes we sort of negotiate right. because I can't take everything and I can't give everything to her. And it's, you know, so, and sometimes when we see it on auction, it's not quite clear whose it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we have to just have one pay for it. Because if I pay for it with my own bank account, then it's for the collection. But if we're going to sell in the flea market, the company pays for it with the company account. Mm -hmm. 
I've got one of those tonight. This is, I, I bought an auction last night, and I didn't pay for it yet because I have to talk to what Nabisan. Who's going to get this one? And I think because I have taken this one away from her the last couple of days, that auction I won last night, it's going to have to go to her. So this it? So it's over to her. She can pay for it. I mean, the company can pay for it, and she can have those prints, even though I sort of kind of want them. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know we'll let's out of here. It's Thursday, Saturday. I will either be carving on the Surfer Girl or I will be sketching. Oh, no, whatever. They, they've actually seen it. It's here in the iPad. The iPad was on the desk. I will be sketching on the new Hokusai drawings or I will be carving the Surfer Girl or I'll maybe even be fixing more Matsushima blocks for Aimee san. I don't know. I don't know. Bit chaotic today. Sorry about that. Do we need to switch over? If I do this, are you visible? Oh, you're sort of visible in one corner. Here's your camera. Here you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're out of here. Thanks very much, gang. <laughs> so, see you in a couple more days. Let's see, how do I get the uh, outside camera here? Let's pick, make the outside camera priority. This is so much fun. <laughs> see you later, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh no, it's not covering over everything. Look at this. Oh no. No, they're in the wrong order. It's still visible. They're in the wrong order because I have to send this one up, 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 layering. There it goes. It's up, down. Okay, you're off camera. <laughs> Chaos today. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Someone says, I caught one quick comment there. Someone says, something, I forget, they said it was a bit of a mixed dream today, but it was all. He learned one super thing about Dave's sleeping habits. That makes it all <laughs> makes it all worthwhile. He somebody said like what? <laughs> what? That's uh, the main topic today. Yeah, I get it. I don't even know. I have to be careful what I say sometimes. <laughs> Amy sends back oh, already. Good timing. Okay, shut this down. Let's get out of here. Let's get this out of here. Bye for now, everybody. See you in a couple of days. Oh. <laughs>